Hello, and welcome to Inside RBC, your source for news and information from Richard Bland College of William & Mary. I'm your host, Amy Lacey. Our first story takes us inside the Department of Research and Innovation at Richard Bland College of William & Mary, where high school students from the Petersburg area broaden their participation in STEM education by attending a four-day camp. That camp included partnerships with Amazon, Drone Up, and the Richmond International Airport. So the name of the grant is GPS Systems, stands for Guided Pathways to Success, Systems Sustaining Years of STEM. Get this rolling, okay? This is preparing you for college. It's designed to broaden student participation. Very nice to meet you as well. I'm Benita Giddy. Michael. And STEM. All right, so welcome to Richard Bland. With our partners, we want to do several STEM initiatives, STEM projects that engage. Having a partnership with Richard Bland College and the Petersburg City Public School is crucial, and we can see now that the students are actually having their dreams come to fruition. We now are in partnership with the cities of Hopewell, Petersburg, Surrey County, Dinwiddie and Prince George County school systems, and we built MOUs around active learning environments. We are from Amazon Web Services. We had representatives actually from Amazon that flew in from Seattle, Washington just to engage our students. The Richard Bland Research and Innovation team got in contact with us. We can push that because I can crunch this. The beautiful thing about this program is our partners. Like we leverage tech, but we have to still use ourselves and our brains to regulate it and decide. And we like, work with high schools across uh, six countries, um, globally across the, the whole world, and uh, we're always looking to connect with high schoolers and the work that Richard Bland was doing to reach out to the communities to us was really interesting. When Amazon came, they were all about teaching the kids about the cloud and how the cloud works. So what is this cloud? And it went over the fact that a lot of people think the cloud is just an abstract idea, but it is a real thing that we use in almost everything we do daily. At Amazon, we're creating lots of jobs with our cloud side of the business, AWS. And we believe that if we're creating all of these jobs, not just at Amazon, but at companies all over the world, we have a responsibility to inspire the next generation and, and get them excited about all of the opportunities that they have for them. The Amazon experience, I think that was one of the fun parts of this camp. We are flying this drone beyond where we can see. Another partner is Drone Up. We talk about airmanship. Anyone want to know what airmanship is? Drones are something that students are very interested in. Uh, this information is your route. STEM camp students come. We as a drone up gave a, a sh small presentation to the students. We're flying at about five, six miles away and only uh, operating off of uh, LTE, so cell phone connection. Uh, it was a good way that we could uh, reach back to students or high school uh, students and, and show them what type of avenues that they can take when it comes to STEM. I'm gonna kill one of these motors and, and you'll see how it reacts. So you see how one side dipped down because it lost the propulsion on that, on that arm. We had a number of students come through to the hub where we train our uh, prospective pilots that fly deliveries for us at Drone Up. And then after we land, after we remove the batteries, We'll let you guys go up, you can touch them, but in reality there's so many avenues that these students can take. There can be structure engineers, software engineers, there can be pilots that actually are flying it, there can be maintainers that are maintaining the drones. We had a, a number of students get a, get a chance to, to see what it would look like to actually pilot the drone from inside the tower. And so with the drone ups, they were able to see what droning looks like, not just playing with drones outside, but you can also make a career out of it. So I think it was nice to have that introduction to them as well. On the third day, we all ate breakfast together. We took a bus ride to the airport. As an educator, it is very important to bring students out to have experiences such as this at the Richmond International Airport. The pilots use a checklist every time they fly. So when we first got to the airport, we went to the maintenance hangar. Our airplanes fly a little bit higher than the average airliners. Which the STEM students from Richard Bland College came by today. 
and got a brief introduction to aviation. We do a lot of communications checks. I'm with the maintenance team. I discuss some of the items that we commonly refer to as scheduled and unscheduled maintenance. And they showed us how they take care of the airport, specifically the runways and what they do when there's inclement weather. This is our snow removal equipment building. Our goal in this whole program is to expose students to the opportunities that exist in the aviation industry. This is a city and there are varied jobs. Anything you're going to find in a county government or city government, you're going to find here. Everything that you see outside, we maintain. The trees, the shrubs, everything except for the electrical. And it's all related to STEM. How many of you guys have flown in an airplane before? Richard Bland, STEM Camp, visited our hangar today and they saw four very cool things. We had so restricted loud. access basically to parts that the regular public doesn't get access to. So you guys are being wearing a headset with a microphone. You could talk back and forth to each other. With those. We saw a couple of smaller planes. This is an aircraft that a lot of people, it's their first flight. If you wanted to buy this airplane brand new, it'd be $700,000. There was a simulation for us to actually like see what it's like to drive an airplane, well, fly airplane. And it has all the controls. It has rudder pedals, it has a yoke or a steering wheel, and it's got a throttle for them to um, practice takeoffs and landings. It was very technical. It, it, it was just like the real thing. So the last thing they were in was also um, a King Air. We went in the governor's plane that he takes himself. We were also able to speak to the CEO, Mr. Miller. I'm really glad to see you all and hope you all are learning a lot. He had a lot of insight on how the airport worked and he described it as a little city. Every discipline you can think of that takes place in a city pretty much takes place here. He came and he engaged and talked directly with our students. I really did not know what I wanted to be when I grew up. I appreciate the fact that he was so candid. But I got really focused when I went to college. He talked about what it takes to be an amazing student and have an awesome career. When I entered the workforce, I started as a student intern. He didn't know what he wanted to do either, but aviation sparked his interest and he kept going with it, and now he's the CEO of the Capital Regional Airport Commission. Well, when I entered the workforce, I was so prepared for the first eight years of my career, I was promoted seven times. He really honed in on the fact that you can really if it sparks your interest, then go with that. Now boarding throws 30 to 40. We utilize mindfulness techniques. So remember last class we talked about mindfulness. We look at mental health and positive outcomes. What's one stereotype you've heard related to mental health? We utilize positive psychology. So it means being able to work productively, being able to recognize signs or be aware of signs where you may be becoming distressed. They taught us techniques on how to meditate. And we want to teach you guys techniques and strategies and how to just be more mindful, how to self-care and how to center ourselves and express how we feel in a safe and open place. We actually work with virtual reality to allow students to go into virtual systems and imagine themselves in different places. The virtual reality program was definitely my favorite part of the camp. The teachers taught us a lot about how to relax. The VR tied to the mental health class where they taught us how to deal with our emotions. We never know what people could be going through. It's also about creating equitable outcomes for underrepresented students, rural students. Here at Richard Bland, we have a diverse student population. It's just such an exciting and engaging time that we're just happy to partner with everyone. So I think the exposure is probably the best thing to come out of this for the students. I feel like this STEM camp was very insightful. It showed students how science, technology, engineering, and math are present in their daily lives. And I feel like it was very eye-opening and a good pathway to give students that encouragement they needed to pursue STEM.
did the pandemic affect your ability to stay in college? Stress kept my friends from coming. Money held mine back. Richard Bland College of William & Mary is offering an opportunity for you to get back on track with your academic journey. With financial aid. Including mental and emotional support. RBC even helps dual enrollment students. Affected by COVID. Get back on track. Back on track. Get back on track at RBC. Apply now while scholarships are available. Welcome back. Richard Blaine College of William & Mary students recently explored aquatic life and ecosystems on a trip to the Outer Banks of North Carolina. This was part of a project headed by Dr. Eric Miller, RBC Assistant Professor of Biology. Imagine your DNA is millions and millions of nucleotides long. My we classes here at RBC quick, range a little bit from what I would call a basic bio 101 course. This stuff is held together by a weak hydrogen bond. Two intense outdoor learning courses. One of my major goals here at Richard Bland is to get students outside. It's what I consider, or what I call my, my potpourri approach. This is one of our two beach access points. I try many different approaches to get to the same goal because some students don't learn the same way and I'd hate to penalize a student that doesn't learn the same way that another student does. So everybody, we're just gonna put everything in the Explorer. Eric got us together for a field trip to go to North Carolina. Every time we do do a beach cleanup at one of our sites, we'll actually let Sir The Carter alternative we'll spring break trip was something that we did in previous years. And so there is still some trash, so be sure to look out for it. So close to perfect. We went to go clean up beaches and volunteer, and we learned about a lot of the marine life. Like you don't see any trash in that grass at all. Like we did a whole trash, really. group clean up. We got to recollect almost 70 pounds of trash. It's an opportunity for students to give back to the community, to learn, but also still have fun. And if you did not know, shipwrecks uh, provide a habitat. We got a behind the scenes tour at an aquarium. We explore behind the scenes we got to know what the fish or other animals in the aquarium eat. So typically during this season they are fed twice a week. How they're taken care of. Are we going to feed them? What they need. Some of the animals there are rescue animals. And once you see that you can make your way to the net over there. Everybody loves an aquarium. Every time they get in they get that um, number of hours log diving. Who doesn't love to go see one? This habitat did get fed. Cockroaches, mealworms. Yeah, that's good stuff. <laughs> so we learn about their animal's health. We learn about the educational system of their animals, how they take their animals and educate the public with them, how they feed the animals. Who knew that alligators needed vitamins? You know, I didn't certainly know that, and these people taught us that. Does anybody know how long uh, Native Americans had been here before? Like here, Another in, in thing the, we did was we America. visited uh, the Lost Colony. So at the Lost Colony, uh, they have a, a, an awesome museum. It's a, it's a federal park. So we went into the museum. We learned a lot about what they hypothesized happened. And then we actually got to go out there and see. And we learned a lot about the Lost Colony. It was, it was cool. The English focused instead on exploration and the search for easy riches. We not just learn biology, we also learn a little bit more about history and what it represents to our, to our country. We took a kayak trip down the river in what they call the maritime forests. And along the way, we learn uh, about pirates. Like, who doesn't want to learn more about pirates? We learned about the little duck hunting houses, which was really interesting because I didn't know any of that stuff. North Carolina was a pretty good experience, although it was cold. Yes. We also enjoyed ourselves together. Oh, good. <laughs> and learned more about biology, the ecosystem, and history. One word I would probably use to summarize this experience is memorable. And they'll always think of that guy with the beard, and they'll always think of Richard Bland College, and they're gonna think 
They let me go. They sent me to the Outer Banks for spring break. To paraphrase the philosopher Mashona de la Wayeo, a rose starts as a bud, a bird as an egg, and a forest a seed. Set south of the historic cities of Richmond and my hometown of Petersburg, Virginia, nestled amidst hundreds of stately pecan trees, there's a scenic and serene, picture-perfect place, a place that invites contemplation, self-discovery, reinvention, a place where young minds have been nurtured for generations, a place where students cultivate their genius and passion, where they gain clarity about their unique purpose and prospects for their future. It is here that students learn and grow and evolve to become their authentic selves, critical thinking and applied learning. Business and community leaders, entrepreneurs, educators, and yes, even celebrities have traced their accomplishments back to the seeds that were first planted right here at Richard Bland College of William and Mary. Thanks for coming back. The dual enrollment program at Richard Bland College of William and Mary provides Hopewell High School students with an opportunity to graduate with two degrees in one. This program is offered both online and in person with RBC credentialed teachers. All right, let's go ahead. Chapter 5 slideshow. Let's get it opened up. Dual enrollment at Richard Bland College takes many forms. We offer dual enrollment where students can take college level courses that will also substitute as their high school requirements. The accounting cycle. What have we done so far in the accounting cycle? So they're taking them along in high school as juniors and seniors. So we have to update everything so that everybody's on track. We offer the dual enrollment in a number of ways. Uh, many of our students take their dual enrollment courses at their home high school, taught by their own high school teachers that Richard Bland has credentialed as adjuncts. We're gonna make sure they have a zero balance. My experience with Richard Bland and the dual enrollment program has been, I think it's been great, it's been a great relationship. Usually about halfway through February is when we finish January. I like to think of it as like a doctor's waiting room. They've worked really hard to make sure that we have all of our students, they're enrolled, if we're missing a student, they get them into the classes um, as far as online. Who's taking an online class? They also make sure that we're okay as teachers. We appreciate you, because I can tell you accounting one and two, we do not have many high schools that offer that for We can have access to our email and we can get online and be able to teach the best way that we can. It's on the asset side. My experience in dual enrollment has been great. I've learned a lot that I wouldn't have in regular classes. I've been able to get experience of college classes while still in high school and in challenging classes. Yep, no problem. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. The dual enrollment program uh, through Richard Bland is important um, for high school in particular around the opportunities that it provides our kids. How many students are in that class? They get to experience the college setting before they even enter a formal college. Computer science, fine arts elective, and psychology are Richard Bland teachers, professors who teach that class virtually. Students can take classes online, they can take them in person. We have the teachers at Hopewell High School who are credentialed to teach dual enrollment in person. And for those uh, staff, for those classes that we do not have an in-person teacher, we rely on Richard Bland to provide virtual instruction for those classes. If you earn a year's worth of credits for college, you've come out ahead in this entire program. The school administration, particularly the principal, you know, that drives the program. Having that buy-in, the vision of the school, knowing what that school needs, that is, you know, one of the, the biggest factors in making a partnership work. And we had, I think, six or seven items that were important to you guys as students. This can be a reality for any child, and money does not have to be uh, a barrier. At the end of the day, I just want you all to know that our goal has never, never been that it be something that is a forever restriction. My main benefit is that I only have to go to school for two years to get my bachelor's degree, as opposed to paying for the extra two years. My family doesn't have to pay for that, and we. It's easier for us to transfer those credits instead of going to the four-year institution for four years to get the same degree for more money. The answers are right at our hands and we don't have to think through them. 
We don't One of the things that's made the associate's degree so popular for, for all of us is the savings that our students and families can, can have when students uh, commit to the two-year degree program. The rule is the rule, and it applies to everyone. Since I'm going to be graduating high school with my associate's degree, I'll be able to go straight into college as a sophomore. That'll help me finish college earlier and start on all my plans for after college life. Thank you for taking advantage of this experience. We're proud of all of you. So the Hopewell High School dual enrollment program is a very exceptional program. Their administration, their school board, their community and their city, they are all for this program. They have all bought into it. They are very passionate about the program. They are 100% supportive. Still unsure about what college to attend? Choose Richard Bland College of William & Mary as your first step to a big-name university degree without the big college debt. It's not too late to apply to RBC. Welcome back to Inside RBC. Our next story takes us inside Richard Bland College's student success program, particularly the learner mentors. As academic advisors, their job is one-pointed. Make sure students are on a successful track during their academic stay at RBC. Explain what a learner mentor is at RBC. So a learner mentor at Virtual Point College really is an advisor that looks out for the end goal for the student, both academically and professionally. I would take microbiology or, or Chem 102. So that's good. Just make sure it's 16 credits. Okay to really um, help ensure the student is on a complete track academically at Virtual Learning College. Um, so we're just kind of going to float around the room making sure that they can take the right courses to be on track for graduation. With that track, help engage the student with professional opportunities and career opportunities that help connect the student based on their academic interests. We go to degree evaluation. Learner mentors here at Richard Bland are basically navigators that help students choose topics that they wish to hopefully pursue after Richard Bland, different colleges. It's a head start in life. So we're going to be looking, when we look at the learner talking about the brain stem. How does this program fit into the overall success of students at RBC? So the learner mentor program fits really well into the success of students. So this will tell you like all the requirements. Students that meet with learner mentors more frequently do well. So I would take accounting one. They have a more concrete plan after talking with Laura mentor. They're able to really identify what are the factors um, that are important in terms of transferring. You have to kind of structure your class schedules. What are the majors they're considering? Like most students take like a communication course, like public speaking. So after you've typed up the entire speech, what do they need to take in consideration? You'll look at English 1 or 2. Three to five sentences is a good ballpark. About taking classes, about their overall success. Just make sure you do it as soon as possible so you get your spot, because I know like a lot of classes are filling up. We have students of all type of backgrounds that come to our Richard Blaine College, so we really can create individualized academic plans to help their needs and students. I recommend at least 15 credit hours. There are like brand new courses that are structured like summer and winter. My learner mentor experience has always been very positive here. So how are your grades been? Um, I think they're going really well. I only have one problem in biology though because it's a really difficult course. Being a learner mentor to me is especially a fulfilling career uh, that helps me work with students like Kylie uh, so that we can help them matriculate to the point they want to be at. I'm taking this one as an elective. I'm a bio major. So to anyone coming to Richard Bland, it's an amazing program. Do you know of any like tutoring opportunities on campus? They're friends to the students here. They're always adamant about that. So we do have tutoring opportunities here on campus. So Kylie came here at RBC as an associate student, and as you know, we worked together, she had aspirations to go to William & Mary. So these first couple are gonna be translating. For me, that helps me get her to that point. So whether that's class registration, whether that's being there to talk with her, or whether that's being a tutor for her if she needed it. For me, learning mentors do that so they can do the work so our students can succeed in the end. 
That does it for this edition of Inside RBC TV. I'm your host, Amy Lacey. For more information about Richard Bland College of William & Mary, visit us on the web at rbc.edu or go to our YouTube channel for a rebroadcast of our show. See you next time.